Hello, and uh, today we're going to talk about uh, Dragon Ball Z Spark and Zero from a casual's perspective. So, um, uh, the game's been out for a while, and we're going to head into episode mode right now. So, uh, there are certain modes that I would say are casual player friendly. I know everyone's going and like ranking everything, but what about the modes for the people that's, you know, just want to play some Dragon Ball and have, have a good time? So, we got the story mode in here, and this story mode is actually very mixed. Like, a lot of people are like... I don't think no one loves the story mode. I think some people kind of like some of the what ifs and everything. So um, the first thing you'll be greeted with is like a Goku story and everything. So you can go through his path and everything. And when you uh, go through Goku story mode, you see in some screenshots and the screenshots look kind of funny and everything. But the biggest issue I have with this story mode is as soon as you get into the fight, you notice something that's not right. You notice that you having trouble with Raditz. You notice that Raditz is, like, difficult, man. And it's weird, too, because the game gives you a tutorial before you, like, go ahead and see the theme song. And then you're like, oh, I'm ready for these guys. And then you get in here, and it's like, man, this is the fight of your life out here at the beginning. So I'm like, man, I, I know what you're going to say, get good at the game. But it's for a casual perspective. Let's say you got this uh, game for, like, a, a kid or something, and the kid's, like, trying to play Dragon Ball Z, and they better be good because they about to get beat over and over again. And don't let them get to the great ape. I know for, like, uh, regular uh, people that are, like, good at fighting games and anime games, they're going to be doing good. But, man, if you don't know what you're doing out here, you're going to be struggling. You ain't going to have no type of fun. And I don't think that's good on a casual level. Like, even if you lower the difficulty and put it on weak, you still might struggle. And so this video is not about elitism. This is just talking about for, like, casual fun gameplay. It's kind of it's kind of ridiculous in some ways. But... This is the mode for uh, casual players. Like uh, most people that were competitive, you know what happened with them. They went to rank day one. But the people that wanted to just play some Dragon Ball and have a good time, they pretty much just, you know, they they stayed here and they did their thing. So the the good thing about this mode though is this mode does like uh, have what ifs. So if you're tired of seeing the Dragon Ball Z story. Well, they, they got something for you. They got branching storylines. There's not that many as you would think. Like, I think Goku has, like, I think Goku has, like, three of them. And, like, the majority of them are in the Saiyan Saga or something, which is wild. I don't know what they were thinking with that. But that's the way they decided to go about it and everything. And it is what it is. But uh, this, um, some of the battles are, like, um, the way you do them is you have to, meet the conditions and if you win too fast you will get like a secret condition but if you're fighting an enemy and you're just beating them way too fast you might get the secret condition and never actually effectively beat the story mode because you you, you got to beat them slower and sometimes if you try to fight them too slow they'll just beat you so i i thought that was kind of weird for some fights i had to like lower the difficulty just to beat the game and progress in the story because they kept sending me to like an optional thing because i kept beating the guy too fast so even if you do get good now you're too good and now you have to lower the difficulty just to win and that's kind of kind of strange but and and the presentation of this it looks like they made these these story mode cutscenes with custom battles so it's kind of it's kind of weird and some people are just missing arcs they're just flat out missing arcs so when you go to goku He's going to basically do most of the things that Goku did. Like, I don't think they were missing too much except his fight with Bergamo for some reason. They missed both of his fights with Bergamo. And we're focused on, you know, uh, the Tournament of Power and stuff, but we, we missing all Bergamo's fights. Like, what's going on there? But, yeah, it'd be some weird exclusions and everything. And then we got other people's story modes, but their story modes might as well not be in. We should have just did, like, a standard, this is everybody's story mode. Because we put characters in, like, Cybermen. And they don't, they got one fight in the story mode in a what if. So I don't know why we put it in Cyberman. Because we left out some good characters. Like, I'm sure you guys heard about, like, Android 17, uh, Super 17, anyway. PyCon, and, you know, people of that nature and everything. And we throwing in Cyberman, but you can't even really fight him in the story, but he's in. So it's it's kind of weird, man. It, it, it's some strange decisions going on here on a casual perspective. But, yeah, the story mode, I would... I don't think I had fun with it. I think I was beating these enemies, and I'm watching bad-looking cutscenes, and I'm just like, no, nah, this ain't it right here. So the story mode is kind of weird. So if you don't like being Goku, you can you can be other characters, but they, they have their issues with their story mode. Like, their story mode is, like, unfinished, and they just don't 
get enough fights. They just don't fight the right people. It's people that they should be fighting that you think they're going to fight, and they just never run into those guys. Never. Like, they just they just couldn't run into them. So I don't know what was going on there and the thought process there because we just would not let them fight those guys. So that was kind of strange to me. It was it was definitely some strange decisions going on with this game and everything. And, and the AI is just so broken, man. Like, it, these fights don't even feel really rewarding. It, it's it's kind of insane, really, if you think about it. But yeah, the episode battles, uh, the what-ifs were a good job, so I like that. If they ever do anything story mode related, I would like them to continue the path of these branching what if sometimes but the presentation of everything was so bad that these what ifs spawned into storylines but they looked like you didn't care about them so i thought that was kind of weird but there's uh characters that we're also gonna be like playing in and some of the the choices are just so questionable like you'll be looking to yourself like what's going on here You'd be like, oh, man. So we got Goku story mode, which is pretty much the main story mode, which I'm sure you're used to it. But everybody fought more than, you know, not. So I don't know why their story mode is just getting scuffed in this game. And the way they did Piccolo, man. Piccolo was done so weird. But I, I don't know. It's, 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 it's mixed. Like, I would say the story mode is is is. It, it might as well have not been put in the game. I would have rather we put in Galaxy Mode from, like, uh, Raging Battle 2. But, like, Vegeta, he just does nothing. Like, Vegeta just didn't even get super. Gohan, he did more than you would think. But no Namek Saga and no Saiyan Saga. Piccolo, just just nothing but basically just the Android Saga. Like, what happened with Piccolo? Piccolo just didn't do anything. Future Trunks just was in Future Trunks arc. And then he gets to turn him into power in a what if, which is odd. But it's better than nothing. Frieza, Frieza actually did most of his fights. I think they did Frieza's story good. So he was he was fine. Uh, Goku Black, they basically uh, just had him in some nonsense. It was horrible. It was just terrible. And Jiren, he did only things that Jiren did. And even his branch and story mode seemed like the same story mode. So they messed up Jiren. And that's the end of uh, the episode talk. So now we're going to roll into, like, the custom battle mode so I can uh, share some thoughts oh, with the custom battle mode. So when you look at Trunks with that tablet over there, he getting it rolling. So when you get into the custom battle mode, you're greeted with, like, the bonus battles. And they already have some custom battles that were pre-made into the game, I guess, by the developers or something. And you can do these. I made my own. I'm basically in the works of uh, recreating the story mode because they gave me such a, a bogus story mode that I'm trying to make a casual experience for myself. So I'm I'm pretty much recreating the story mode right now with these uh custom battles and everything. And... Yeah, I'm going to go to one. I'm probably going to go to the one with Nappa where he just beats Tien. So I'm doing it from the perspective of the villains, too, when they win. So I'm not going to beat Nappa knowing full well that Tien and uh, Chaozu got beat by Nappa. So I'm I'm on the verge of uh, recreating. But here's another issue here is making the dialogue, man. Making the dialogue is so difficult in this. So we got the fall of Tien. You can make a, like a Dragon Ball Z title and everything. So I see where they were going with this, but making the dialogue just made it just so annoying. And look at this Tien. This Tien is going to be spamming uh, supers on me left and right. So I, I don't know how to control this AI right here. This AI going mad, man. But yeah, custom battle mode was for us to... Uh, is it just for us to fight the CPU? Because like... like it, they want to say that we get to get creative with making like the beginning and the ending of this, but at the end of the day, we're just fighting a character. Like there's no, there's nothing like ultimate battle mode or something where you're being, you know, you're going through a checklist or something or just, I don't know. I, I, I think the custom battle mode might not be good. I know it's a high take, but for a casual perspective, we got to sit in here and and make these battles instead of just playing uh our character versus the CPU and it seems kind of weird. So they 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 really did just give us this make make your own battles and stipulation mode but I, it's so taxing and tedious to make these modes that it's not even funny. And then later on in the video I'm going to demonstrate me attempting to make one so you can see what's going on but like this custom battle mode man like it it, it need a lot of work. It, it need a whole lot of work. It need patches upon patches. They need to sort this stuff. They need to make categories so we can search things. Because, like, making a custom battle mode is probably the most not fun thing I've done in a game in a long time. And it, it is 
it is not right. And then just to get into a battle and then I just got to deal with, you know, Chaozu out here. It's just, it's, it's just kind of weird. So for a, um, a casual perspective, custom battle mode is a casual mode. I will give it that. And you can make these guys weaker so you can get through it. So I, I think it's a better casual mode than the story mode in a weird kind of way. Except the only issue is that the casual mode here. The barrier to making these battles is the most annoying thing ever. Now, there's, there's some caveats around that. Maybe you just don't make these battles and it's not that bad. So, as you can see, TN's on the ground and we beat them. And I didn't write no dialogue and you're about to see why. So, we're going to we're gonna head into the um, to the create creator mode so we can actually see how we actually, like, you know, we'll create something like this. So, I'm going to go to normal edit. If you go to, like... Simple edit or something, they'll just make you some bootleg. It, it's it's kind of ridiculous. So you want to go to normal edit. Uh, you want to choose your characters. So you can go to the character tab. You can put in anybody that you unlock theoretically. I think you can put people that you unlocked in there. And then you want to go to, like, uh, choose the stage that they're going to appear on. So, you know, you can pick the city, world tournament, Rocky Mountains, you know, all the stages. So pick your stage. And that's where you're going to fight on. And then you got this effect thing where you can just put so many different things. I get overwhelmed by that. I don't go to it. Um, you, here's this where you can choose the scenes. So as picking the scenes, you can, uh, you know, put the dialogue and the character and the thumbnails on there. You can put all of that stuff into the game. And it is tedious because now you got to scroll down, pick the scenario where they just stand in there. But how do you want them to stand? Do you want them floating in the sky now? Put them down here by the island. Okay, they just sitting there chilling at the world tournament. I kind of like that picture of Freezer right there. Here's nothing. They're showing me nothing on that one. So the issue with these two is that they got, they just don't show you anything almost on some of them. And then now you can go to your characters and you can go ahead and uh, pick the character that's assigned there. Like, for example, we got to find Goku, Goku Z mid. There he is. You can put some, uh, you know, a stance for him, his hand on the shoulder. I guess that's going to do something. And then you can put his expression, but since he's backwards, I don't think I can really see his expression, but maybe the camera will turn. So over here, you got Freezer. You can go ahead and change his stuff. Let's put his hands behind his back or something, if I can find that one. There we go. Hands behind his back. Like He ain't stealing nothing. That's just Freezer over there. It's going to be fine. So we got Freezer over there just, you know, just chilling, as, as Freezers do. And it's just, man, it's just, it's, it's just so tedious. Look at this. And then you got uh, this where I got to find the name of the character that I'm using. I don't know why that's not automatic. And I can't find the name. So I'm just going to call him Garg Jr. right now. And Garg Jr. going to say, take this angry command man. And, and there's a filter button. I didn't press it in the video. I kind of forgot to. But when you go to that filter button, it filters it into scenarios. And you still got to find the thing you're looking for. You don't know what you're looking for because you don't know what their dialogue is. So now... Um, I will find the name Kakarot down here, which I wish I found it before, but, uh, let me go to, there we go, Kakarot, I'm about to put him Supreme Cat, man, so we're gonna go ahead and put some dialogue for him, and look, the struggle is real, too, because I found, I found whatever, what's I'm gonna find, there we go, I found this, and now this is just, man, I just don't know what to put on here, like, where's Frieza's name, man, can I get Frieza in there? Nah, I can't get Frieza, so I guess I will... I will uh, begin you for us. I mean, uh, what we going to pick? You spectator. All right. To defeat spectator. Okay. So we got to defeat the spectator because, like, look at this. Like, this this is just horrible. Like, I don't know what we were thinking here. And when I'm seeing people making custom battle modes, you got to be up in here for, like, a day almost. And just to get some type of fun scenario, I understand what we were trying to do with this casual mode, but this casual mode is not Mario Maker. This is this is just not correct. So, hopefully they 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 patch and add something to this because this needs some help. And then as you can see, I did the thumbnail thing to check and make sure that the thumbnail is good, but I guess it's moving too fast because I guess the frame one thing or whatever, I got to set that off and let's see how it performs now so I can see my dialogue and everything. Let's see. Is my dialogue? There it is. Yeah, this don't make no sense. <laughs> like, that don't make no sense at all. But, yeah, that's that, That's how it is. This is how the custom mode is. This is the mode that they promised us would be our infinite mode to enjoy this game for years to come. And it just sucks, man. It's, it's just sad. So, we losing on the casual side. We got 
story mode, which is kind of bogus. We got uh, custom battle mode, which is also kind of bogus. And and now, the only other casual friendly mode we got, because I'm not including rank or player match. I I, I, will, I will not say that that is casual, but we got we got we got the video library. So this this is the best thing for the casual people, because for the hardcore people, they're gonna make these stages, and you can play these stages. But if you if you try to make them, it's going to be annoying. So just go ahead and play people stages. There's enough people that's dedicated to the game that's making these stages. And on the PlayStation 5, which is where I'm playing it, this stuff is fine. But on the PC, oh, they got some issues there. But on PlayStation 5, you should be fine. So now we're going to roll over to the other modes. Just so you can see the screen and everything. So we got battle, super training, world tournament over there. You know, those other modes that, you know should be there or whatever so we're gonna transport ourselves there's Zeno and his stamps there's the shop with krillin there's this cyclopedia there's summon shouldn't run man we going quick too i'm getting past that so let's go down the world tournament and start an offline world tournament and let's get going so this is the last casual mode and we've had world tournament in pretty much all of the budokai games except for infinite worlds for some reason like budokai's and the tenkaichi they had the world tournament that's when we first present this thing and it still worked like how you remember it if you knock that joker out the ring you are the king i got superpower jiren right there man i don't know what i was doing but anyway uh let's see here's uh let's go ahead and get i i think i might get tn but you're going to see that I, I picked TN, but then I didn't want TN no more. I went ahead and got Yamcha. But the World Tournament, there's not much I can say about the World Tournament. Like It, it, it is how the World Tournament has always been, but I will say one thing. They, they've customized the World Tournament to the point where it's it's actually a really good move for casual players, to be honest. Uh, maybe not the base World Tournament because you can ring out, and some of the ring outs are janky in nature when this happens. But I, I will say the World Tournament, they did a great job with it. I don't think. A lot of people are going to explore it and play it as much. But as far as if we're ranking, like, uh, saying good stuff for casual modes, they, they, they did a lot with the World Tournament. They they made it customizable. You can change dates, times. You can have a team in there now. You can you can do a lot in the World Tournament. So I think the World Tournament mode, they, they knocked it out of the park. They did better and added more things in the World Tournament. Now, now we're picking Yamcha than I thought they ever would. So from a casual perspective, uh, you got episode mode, uh, custom battle mode, and I guess you got player versus computer if you if you want to do that, and you got the world tournament. And the world tournament is what's making me say that the content is okay for this, but it's still kind of weird to see that we, we went with custom battle mode instead of any other potential modes that we could have went with. So... Uh, I, I guess that's about it. There's not much more I want to say and have to say on that. I, I can let the gameplay just just go at this point. But uh, let me know what you think about this is how this game is for a, a casual player in the comments below. And, and if you think my hot takes are kind of weird, they're too much or whatever, I do understand. But that's basically what I think about this game. And, uh, I do think that the, the these are the casual modes, and I tried to explain them a little bit to the best of my abilities here. So hopefully I had some good takes on some of them or whatever, so you know what to expect. But, yeah, hopefully they balance this AI a little bit because I don't want them weaker, but I want them blocking attacks less than they are doing. And then I think that would be better for a casual player because they want to get in there and beat some guys. Like, if, if they want to struggle, we got rank mode for that. They don't want to struggle in the main story on every fight. Unless that fight is like Frieza or, you know, one of the main fights. But against Kui, we struggling against Kui because we can't beat be Kui. Look, look at this Dr. Jero. He just keeps stealing health right now. But, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. You can't you can't really have too much fun as a casual player. You're going to be you about to get beat out here. This is going to be the fight of your life out here in Spark and Zero. This is going to be hilarious. But, yeah, I guess there's nothing else to talk about for a casual perspective. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, I think that's all we have now that I think about it. And I guess the casual people were, like, looking at the uh, the commentary, too, of commentary of the characters. But, yeah, that's about it. You got episode mode, which is lackluster at best. You got custom battle mode, which was a a a, 
okay ideal and the execution was just horrible so that kind of went to the wayside you got the world tournament which they did a phenomenal job with they 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 really tried on the world tournament which is weird because no one really goes to it or anything and you can even do world tournaments online uh, I tried to get some of those going, but it, it, it gets so annoying. But, yeah, they, they gave it online, too. So that's the other good thing about that. But World Tournament was great. And player versus CPU, of course, that, that should be good. I, I hope they didn't mess player versus CPU. Oh, yeah, and they got split screen so you can play with your friends, but you can only play uh, uh, the hyperbolic time chamber stage. So that's... Yeah, it is what it is, but this is some of my thoughts about it. I'm going to, like, review this game at, at a point, but most of this stuff is a good chunk of the game right here. So maybe I will, maybe I won't. Let me know if you want to hear a review. This might just be me just talking about the game as it stands right now, but it, it, it's a good game. Um, I just wish there was more stuff for casual fans to, like, partake in and enjoy because it seems like... They made this for just the people that want to go fight on rank all day, but uh, it's it's unbalanced like crazy. Like people are having their own issues in rank, and I didn't want to really talk about it too much. I can talk a little bit about my experience with rank, and my experience was I didn't run into too many rage critters on the PlayStation Five, uh, but everyone was picking Super Saiyan Four Gogeta. They don't pick the rest of the GT characters, just Super Saiyan Four Gogeta. And I ain't run to the Yajirobis too much either. People were pretty fair in DP from when I was running into. But I heard about the Yajirobi struggle. I just never was in it. Um, yeah, people were just picking Super Saiyan 4, Gogeta, Ultra Instincts. I would beat them sometimes. Sometimes I would cave and then pick a strong character too because I tried to go in there with weak characters like Bergamo and uh, Zamatsu and stuff, and it just was not working. I was just getting beat by Gogeta. So... I don't know. Rank has its own issues. That might be a separate video down the line. I might have to play more Rank 2 before I can rig diagnose this. But here comes one of the funniest things in this video. Watch this. I'm out of bounds. I just dropped. So Kui wins the tournament. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm an uh, outline man. And I lost the world tournament to Kui, which is fitting because we were talking trash about Kui. And hope you enjoy it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye.